This is part three of creating a 2D platformer using libgdx. Um, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to get a little bit away from uh, libgdx and talk a little bit about objects within libgdx. Um, so like I said before, this is kind of introducing you guys to a little bit of object-oriented programming um, that you may have not done before, have done before. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by creating a brand new class. And when we left off last time, we ended up having our character just sit there. And so we just drew a sprite. But it's so much easier to, especially to create multiple versions of our sprite if we have an object and we can just call the object once or twice and, and deal with it that way. So what we're going to do is we are going to be creating a brand new class and we're going to right click and we're going to click on new class. We're going to call this class um, cool guy. So this guy is an actual object. His name is cool guy um, and so on. So we're going to come over here to package and this is just to keep organized. So I'm going to type in objects and any of my objects that I create will be inside this package. So I'm going to click on finish. And as you can see, I have another little package here. This just helps me organize my code. Um, because eventually I'll have tools and other, and other stuff like that. And I've already created a um, kind of a template for this. And I'm going to just copy and paste it and kind of show you the, the structure and structure on, um, and not actually um, type it out. So I'm going to type, I'm going to hit paste right there. And I do need to change it because I did call it new guy. So I'm going to have to cool guy. So in this particular example, what I'm doing here is, uh, uh, let me go over some of these, uh, um, these, these methods. So the first method here, it, you'll notice that it doesn't have a, re have a type. So it's not void, it's not in, it's not Boolean. Um, basically, um, we call this type of method a constructor. And this is the entry point um, of your um, of this particular method. So we're going to call this entry point. So that's the entry point. So every single time we uh, we create a new object, um, kind of like how we did scanner in the past, um, we're going to be using um, we're going to be we're going to enter this first. And this is where we're going to set our default values. So the next part is we have hits. And what hits is, is we're going to have four different uh, um, rectangles. Um, there are other ways of doing this, but for this one, we're going to make it a little bit simple. Uh, and we're going to have four different rectangles, bottom, left, right, and top. And basically, if um, what we're going to do is we're going to determine um, if another rectangle hits that, and then that's how we're going to do our collision detection. And you can actually see we have if bottom um, overlaps R, which means we have a, two rectangles there, we're going to return one. It, um, and so we're going to do the same thing for left, right, top, um, except the difference is, is we're, um, if we don't hit anything, we're going to hit negative one, and then we're going to give it a unique value. Um, then we're going to do action. What action does is it... Um, it was going to be if we hit something, then what we're going to do is we need maybe bounce off of it, or if it's if we touch some spikes, then we die. So the action is going to be is or maybe we jump, hit a spring, we jump up in the air. Um, the action was going to help control some of the um, the velocities and um, things that are going on um, with our character. Update is going to be the um, it's going to affect the movement, the natural movement of the character. So if the character is jump um, jumping, we don't want him to fly up in the air constantly or every time we touch it. So we need him to have a smooth motion. We hit jump once, he goes up, um, and we'll be typing everything in. You'll see that it takes in delta. Delta, delta actually is delta time, and it's a float. Um, and we're going to pass that through, and that's how we're going to get everything to be consistent. We'll get to more of that later. Then we have set position, 
set position is what it is. It sets the position of the um, sprite. Um, yeah, and all the hitboxes. Then we have move left and move right, and we'll be talking about that because we're going to actually be doing. Um, that's how we're actually going to move our character. And then we're going to, and then we have draw. So what we want to do is we really just want to draw another character. So this is what we're going to be doing. So we're going to come all the way up here to the top. And right now we're only going to be worried about the entry point or the constructor and set position and draw in this in this example. So and we'll go over more of these as we keep on going. So first first thing that we're gonna do is bottom controls where we draw our picture. So we're gonna do bottom equals new. And I think that's right. Rectangle. And we are going to do 0, 0. And we're just going to make them encompass everything right now. 128. But we're getting errors here. Actually, we didn't get errors. But um, the values are float. So we're going to put the Fs there. <coughs> Sorry about that. So we have that. Then, I forgot to put in texture in here. So we're going to do texture. And we just need to import it. Now, texture equals new texture. And this is exactly the same code as um, actually the game itself. So... Uh, when we actually put it in, uh, in the last video, so we don't really have to change too much. So we're going to do sprites or sprite slash cool guy dot png. Then we're going to do sprite equals new sprite, and then we're going to throw the texture in there zero zero one twenty eight one twenty eight. And then we're going to do this dot set position. We're going to be doing zero, zero. Now what this means, it means this object or this, uh, yeah, this object. So we're looking in this, we are, this class is cool guy. Okay. So we have this and we're going to go find set position. So we find set position. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be needing to change the x and y um, coordinate of our rectangle. So we're going to do bottom dot x is equal to x. Bottom dot y is equal to y. And that's pretty much all we're doing with uh, um, set position. Um, actually, and then we what we need to do is after we're done with that, we need to change the sprite position. I forgot about that. So set, so we do sprite dot set position, and we're going to do x and y as well, and that should move our hitbox and our sprite location over. When we get over here, we just do sprite dot we do sprite.draw and batch, same exact way. So we're going to hit save here, and we are done with our object. Now we have to implement our object. So we're going to come over in here, and instead of doing texture, we're going to have a private cool guy, and we're going to uh, name it player1. And I'm going to imp import cool guy. I'm going to come over here. Do player one equals new cool guy. And then we're going to do player one dot set position. And we're going to do 200 by 100. So he'll be up a little bit more than before.
and just make sure you put the parentheses. That's what it's yelling at me about. Um, we will handle the texture, um, getting rid of the texture later. So coming over here, instead of doing sprite.draw.batch, we're going to do player1.draw. Save. And now, if I come back over here, when I run this, I should be getting my character here. Now, why did we do it like this? Well, let's look at what would be really cool if we did this. So, not only could we have that, we could have player 2 and player 3. So, when we come over here, we can do player 2 equals new cool guy. Then we have player two dot set position, and we will be putting that one at let's say fifty and two fifty, so it's up a little bit higher. And we're gonna have player three equals new cool guy. Player three dot set position, and let's do. Oh, we have lots of space, so let's do 600 and 20. So those are our position of our three guys. We're going to come over here, and when, now that we have player 1, we have player 2 dot draw batch. And player 3 dot draw batch. So now that we hit save on this and run it, now we have three uh, new cool guys that are all over the screen. So that is the actual point of creating the object is so we can replicate this really, really fast. So when we start adding controls and behaviors to things, it's great to have an object, especially when we start looking at arrays and being able to store objects in arrays. And we will be using a little bit of poly... Um, Inherit and a little bit of the inherit inheritance model to uh, um, to store all of our data correctly. So I'm hoping that you can all get this far. Um, make sure you guys can try it. Try adding different objects. Try creating your own based off the template. I will uh, include a link to the .java file um, in the description of the video. Um, and you can always look at the course website. Um, when you guys get a chance. So um, anyway, good luck and I hope you guys all have fun